In this video, we're going to talk about the last few topics in chapter 12, which involve a few chemical tests to identify some of the functional groups that we're discussing in this chapter, and we're going to finish up with the remaining of the reactions. So, the first chemical um, test that we're going to talk about is the Tollens test. So understand that there are chemical tests out there that can distinguish different functional groups that are present in molecules. And Tollen tests are specific to identify aldehydes because the Tollens test, which contains, as you can see, a silver cation, is going to be oxidizing aldehydes but not ketones. So if you have a sample and you're suspecting that it has an aldehyde, if you put it with the Tollens reagent upon oxidation, understand that one of the things that it is created in this reaction is going to be the precipitation of silver, okay? And because silver has a particular uh, similarity with how mirrors look like, sometimes this is called the mirrors test and actually in the past this is how mirrors used to be uh, synthesized so understand that in the Tollens test we are going to be able to oxidize aldehydes and not ketones so this is a good test to differentiate between aldehydes and ketones we also have Benedict's test as a chemical test to distinguish aldehydes and ketones now Understand that Benedict's test is going to be very particular because it's going to react with aldehydes that have an adjacent OH group. If that adjacent OH group is not present, then it's not going to work. What I mean by that is that if I highlight the, uh, the aldehyde motif, as you can see, the carbon that is next to the aldehyde is bonded to NOH. So that signature needs to be present. When that is present, as you can see, the Benedict's reagent, which is going to be a copper-based reagent, is going to go from copper 2 to copper 1. And this copper 1 oxide is going to make a brick red solid, okay? And this precipitation reaction is going to turn the solution from blue to brick red, okay? In turn, that aldehyde will be turned into a carboxylic acid. So understand that the test is going to be negative if you have simple aldehydes and simple ketones because you must have an aldehyde that has an adjacent OH group. The reason why we talk about the Benedict's test is because this Benedict's test, since the solution for um, the reaction starts in blue color, as you guys can see in the image that is on the right side of the slide, this is a useful test for many sugars. In chapter 13, we're going to learn carbohydrates and we're going to be seeing how the Benedict's test, it is utilized to determine a specific type of sugar, okay? So again, because many carbohydrates have an aldehyde and the carbon adjacent to the aldehyde has a hydroxyl, the Benedict's test is actually utilized in hospitals to test urine to check if, pers uh, if a person is diabetic because people that... Uh, have diabetic conditions in their urine, you can actually detect the presence of glucose. In other words, that there's sugar in there. This aldehyde, remember, in this reaction, we are going to oxidize it, is going to be turning into a carboxylic acid. So in this reaction, we're turning glucose into gluconic acid. And our Benedict's reaction goes from blue to brick red. So, in the previous part of the lecture, we learned about oxidation. Now we're going to proceed to look at the opposite of oxidation, which is reduction. So we learned previously that primary alcohols can turn into an aldehyde, or primary alcohols can turn into a carboxylic acid. 
secondary alcohols can turn into a ketone. So when we're doing reduction reactions, again, we're doing the opposites. So if we start from an aldehyde, as you can see, the product of the reduction of an aldehyde is going to be a primary alcohol. If we start with a ketone, the product of a ketone is going to be a secondary alcohol. Now, we need to establish that what happens in these reactions in this, is that there are two different reagents that can be utilized in order to accomplish reduction. One of them is going to be NaBH4. In other words, sodium borohydride. Okay, When an aldehyde or a ketone is exposed to this reagent, they're going to make their corresponding alcohol. The other reagent that we can utilize for reduction is going to be molecular hydrogen. And again, if you're utilizing molecular hydrogen, you are required to use the catalyst, nickel, platinum, and palladium. It is necessary in order for the reaction to go. Now we are going to be practicing some reduction reactions, okay? So understand that in the first problem, we have to identify what are the functional uh, groups that are present in our molecule. In the molecule that we have, we have two functional groups. We have, and I'm just going to highlight them, here an alkene. And in this area, we have a ketone. When a ketone gets reduced, and again, I know that it is reduction because we have molecular hydrogen with platinum, is going to turn into a secondary alcohol. Now, you guys learned that in chapter 11, alkenes can also react with molecular hydrogen to give alkanes. So under these conditions, H2PT is going to turn the alkene into an alkane. So what that means is that in this process, the cyclic system goes from having a carbon-carbon double bond to just have a carbon-carbon bond that now has hydrogen so where the alkene was there's hydrogens added and then our ketone is going to go to a secondary alcohol so understand that in this process okay and I'm just going to zoom in in a way for the ketone What is happening overall is that when you reacted with molecular hydrogen, okay, what we have is that the oxygen atom is going to be bonded to hydrogen and the carbon atom is going to be bonded to hydrogen. That's how we result into the secondary. So when we look at the second example, we have an arene and we have a ketone. Let me highlight them. So we have a carbon double bonded to oxygen, single bonded to carbon, single bonded to carbon. The arene is going to be the hexagon that it has the, the alternating double bonds and single bonds. Now, let's note that arenes do not, so our rings, benzene rings, do not react like alkenes. So none of the reactions that we have discussed with alkenes will be performed on a benzene ring. Those double bonds present at the level of the benzene ring, a stability that is not going to be broken from the reactions that we have talked about in the past chapter and this chapter. So when this reaction happens, the only thing that is going to be affected is going to be the ketone that upon reduction conditions is going to be making a secondary alcohol. So 
the product of that second reaction is going to be having that benzene ring and now our ketone turn into a secondary alcohol. In the last reaction, as you can see, we have two different carbonyl systems. We have a ketone, see the 1O, bonded carbon in every, on either side, and we also have an aldehyde. Now, understand that if you have an aldehyde and a ketone in the same molecule and you're reacting it with an ABH4, both functional groups will be reduced. Even if you're reacting them with H2 molecular hydrogen and a catalyst, they will also uh, be reduced. So in this case, what we're going to be making is that the ketone is going to be converted into a secondary alcohol and our aldehyde is going to be converted into a primary alcohol. 